Hi everybody, it's 314 React here. Today we're going to be looking at Terminate Resistance and we're going to be comparing AMD's FSR to Native and then we're going to be comparing FSR to Nvidia's NIS. We're going to be diving into the new DLC here, so there may be some slight spoilers. I'm not really going to be playing the campaign or anything, but if you've not played the game before, go play it. We'll be using uh, Reshade as well on top of that. I've got Reshade set up here with RTGI, nothing else. Just got uh, RT Glam and Illumination. And we're going to compare of how these upscaling methods can help bring that frame rate back up. Because you do lose quite a few frames by running RTGI. So let's dive right in. Alright, so I'm just looking through the settings here. And it doesn't look like it's going to let me turn down that resolution for NIS in full screen for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but if I switch it to windowed, it will let me turn down the resolution. If I turn down to windows full screen... It won't let me, um, which is very strange. It looks like it's locked to whatever the desktop resolution is, which means I might not be able to test NVIDIA NIS on this, but we can still look at uh, FSR. So let's, uh, let's get back. So here we are. This is native 4K. Uh, we're running 54 frames a second with RTGA on. If we just turn RTGI off, it goes up to 97, 98 frames a second, which brings us up to the refresh rate of my monitor with VSync on. As you can see there, uh, having RTGI on takes off 40 plus FPS, and that's with an RTX 3090 uh, with a core i7 6700K, 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's a bit of an older CPU. I am planning on an upgrade very soon, but I don't think this game is particularly very CPU heavy. I can see much more GPU utilization than I am seeing CPU utilization. So I think in terms of the testing we're doing here, that should be fine. Let's turn, let's uh, grab a screenshot first of uh, native. So that's native 4K, no RTGI. RTGI on, screenshot of that. We'll run these screenshots, the video's image comparison tool, uh, ICAT, and we can see some of the finer details. First of all, we're running sub 60 FPS here, uh, but as you can see, Turning on RTGI does add a lot of extra detail. You can see there's extra shadowing under things there, and, uh, extra shadowing near the rocks. Uh, it takes the kind of older look of the game as well. It, it, I mean, this game does look a bit like a sort of uh, last gen game. So giving it that little extra boost of RTGI, a bit of extra ambient occlusion, that kind of thing, does help break it from that kind of look. So I think it's important to have it on. I'll try and remember to put my uh, RTGI settings in the description. But of course, you're, you're taking it sub 60 FPS there, which is not optimal. If we switch over to high quality mode, uh, or ultra quality mode, I think it's called, and FSR, and see what happens. So there we are, the ultra quality on, uh, and that has brought us up to 61 frames a second. Uh, I've seen from previous testing that this will take it from, on an average of... Uh, early to mid 50s to early to mid 60s frame rate doesn't seem like a great deal I expected it would do a lot more with that such as Nvidia's NIS did uh, and especially DLSS but DLSS is a different technology so we shouldn't really include that in the comparison but even then just getting that frame rate above 60 is is really good because you you do notice it going from 50s to 60s certainly when you're moving around in combat and stuff like that. The image quality has retained. There's some extra shimmering, especially in the areas where there's lots of RTGI going on. I think that may be something to do with the RTGI and the TAA. So as you can see in the distant areas, there's a lot more shimmering with those bulbs and uh, finer details. That's just because of the, the lower resolution internally being upscaled is just going to result in more sort of pixel shimmering and things like that. It's kind of unavoidable, but it's not, it's not terrible. It still looks good. You can see they've tried adding in some extra sharpening on top. I uh, don't know how well that comes through on YouTube, but certainly the middle building there and building to the left there certainly look a little bit a little bit sharper. They've had, definitely added a sharpening filter to try and offset that kind of blurriness. I think, I think it works well. They've not gone too far on that, and they've found a good balance. Let's grab a screenshot of that. I'm going to turn the RTGI off and grab a screenshot of that. So, in fact, the... Uh, the blurriness is, ex and the sharpness as well, looks to be accentuated by adding in the RTGI. I guess the FSR is trying to deal with the extra data coming in on the image there from the RTGI shader and is resulting in a bit more blur. Uh, it should be noted there's no sharpening filter being added in a reshade itself, it's literally just the RTGI. So, yeah, that's, that's really interesting. 
it's certainly still playable it certainly still looks good and if you sat back you, you probably wouldn't notice it so much but it does like i say give you that extra few fps not as high as i'd hoped but what we're going to do now is we're going to flick it over to quality mode and see how that compares so it appears that the similar sort of settings that Nvidia's stuff does, you know, ultra quality, quality, performance, balanced. The only one it lacks is ultra performance, I think. So we've knocked it down to quality here. And you can see there's a slight bit of extra shimmering and a bit of loss of detail in the distant areas there. The more forward areas, the closer areas still look almost just as good as ultra quality. And the frame rate's gone up to 64 FPS. So it's given us an extra three FPS to play around with. So I imagine that's just knocked the resolution down a little bit, not too much. Again, the shimmering with the RTGI stuff, not too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. I think you probably even see that in... You, you still do see that in native 4K because of the, the TAA. I mean, you could compensate that by turning off the TAA in the game engine and adding in FXAA or SMAA, uh, either by the drivers or by uh, another reshade shader. But we're going to leave that on for now because it's not too distracting. I think if there was a lot more organic areas like grass and trees, you'd see a hell of a lot more shimmering. But because there's, it's not much of an organic landscape we're looking at here. So I think that's fine. So yeah, that boosts up the frame rate a little bit more. And it still looks pretty good. Uh, you're not really going to notice it in gameplay too much. So let's check out the next one, which will be performance mode. Now here's where we do see a drop in image quality. Although it's still not, it's not a horrendous drop. Uh, but we are seeing the frame rate go up to 81 here. So that's 20 plus, almost 30, yeah, 30 frames above from native 4K with reshade on. Although, interestingly, reshade doesn't appear to actually be on now. That's interesting. What's, what's going on there? Let's flick it back to quality. So you can see the reshade's on there. We'll leave it on. And then if we go to options and turn it to performance, the reshade turns off. But the performance is still the sort of same as it should be going way above. Yeah, so you can see the f the frame rate I can see here has gone up to 98. But then when I switch it back on, the effects aren't being added, but it is taking down the frame rate. So I think the internal resolution is too low for Reshade to work with there. So it looks like Reshade won't work with performance mode on FSR. But if it did, it looked like you'd be getting 80 frames a second out of it. Because it's still taking that frame rate away for some reason. That's That's really interesting. I'll grab a screenshot of that anyway. That's really interesting. All right, let's flick over to balance and see if it works on there. See on balance mode, you can see uh, the RTGI is back and we're at 66 frames a second. So that's a couple of extra frames. Oh no, 71. So yeah, and that looks really good. That doesn't look too bad. That looks like it's in between quality and uh, performance as you'd imagine. Let me turn RTGI off. Let's flick it back to ultra quality. So it does feel a hell of a lot smoother with ultra quality on and the sort of extra shimmering you don't notice too much. So it's not that bad. Um, and the extra frame rate is definitely worth it in combination with the extra effects from RTGI. So you can see the extra shadowing it adds there. Extra shadowing within the buildings and inside the buildings and stuff like that. Uh, makes the fire look a bit more intense and vibrant down there so obviously it's still not smooth as it could be but as long as you're maintaining sort of over 60 fps that's a good thing to have so that's fsr i'm going to try and switch on nis now i'm going to try and put it into windowed mode and try and run in quad hd and see how what happens there. i don't think it's going to work though yeah, that didn't work. It just literally, yeah, put it in Windows mode. So it looks like you can't use NIS with this. What I do want to do, though, is one final look. So I imagine, so we can't compare with NVIDIA's NIS, but we can compare with normal interpolation resolution scaling within the engine. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the ultra quality here. And then we're going to turn off FSR and we're going to scale down the internal resolution to let's say 50 percent that should bring us to internally 1080p i think um and then it'll be using basic blocky interpolation to pump that back up to 4k output so let's try that now and yeah immediately you can see that it looks worse than even performance mode with uh, fsr and the frame rate is 
59 FPS. Oh, no, it's just jumped up. I think the NVIDIA performance overlay is just being weird for me at the moment. What is it doing? 82 FPS. So that's about the performance that performance mode was giving. And similar to performance mode, RTGI is no longer working. Either whether you run a lower internal resolution without FSR or run FSR, you're going to lose... You know, if you go too low, you're going to lose the ability to use reshade, uh, which kind of voids the point of using this in the first place. So if you are going to use reshade uh, with Terminator and you're going to be using RTGI or if you want a similar effect, but for a free shader, I think Mike McFly does other uh, shaders that do very similar things with ambient occlusion and you're seeing your frame rate drop, then yeah, you want to be sticking to FSR, ultra quality, quality or balanced. I think it will run on basically any graphics card from the past six years. I think FSR will, whether it's NVIDIA or AMD. I'm not sure about Intel. It may do to do some research that to the future. But overall, yeah, I mean, you can just see here already. Let's flick back to ultra quality FSR. And you can just see, yeah, the quality is far better. Uh, obviously, you're getting less FPS with the, the high quality mode, the ultra quality mode. But if you dial it down to quality or even balanced, you'll be getting that similar frame rate, but without the horrible interpolation look. So yeah, it's really imp it's really impressive technology. Again, I'd love to have compared this directly with Nvidia's NIS, but it doesn't appear it's going to let me do it on this game. If anyone knows why I can't change the resolution of full screen, uh, please do let me know. Other than that, this new DLC Annihilation line for Terminator Resistance is is awesome as far as I'm playing it. Uh, I mean, the other game was great. It's really good. I'm a I'm a strong Terminator fan. Anything past T2 is going to take a lot for me to approve, and I definitely approve this game. Alright, so let's uh, jump out and go to NVIDIA's iCat and see if we can get some comparisons on these images we've been taking. Okay, so here we are. On the left, we've got uh, native 4K with no reshade, and on the right, we've got ultra quality FSR with no reshade. So as you can see, as we drag, drag across there. As you can probably see, there's that definite impact on detail. And you can see those artifacts from the sharpening appear there. As you can see, there is a loss of detail for that extra sharpening around it. Kind of the extra noise in the image there and that's the main impact of fsr as far as i'm seeing uh, other than that it's not like excessively blocky or blurry like you would get with you know dumb upscaling and on some parts it sort of enhances the image just a little bit sort of by accident like these bricky areas here look a bit more like they've got bricks and sort of damaged mortar on them. There's also uh, less colour accuracy as well. You can see there if we zoom right in. And more sort of nicely blended colours. Then as you go over to the FSR one, there's less data to be blending there so it doesn't quite merge as well. But it still looks really good. Really, really nice. Very effective. And this is zooming in very, very far. So, And then if we flick over to the reshade versions. So we've got the reshade version of native on the left. And let's switch over to the reshade version of FSR quality on the right. Pretty much the same story. Uh, you won't see the flickering, obviously, from the static image. It doesn't look like the text is affected there at all by the upscaler. That's interesting. I'm guessing it's just easier to upscale. The UI elements um, or the UI elements are done after the upscaling. Same story there. I mean, close up you can really see the details, but far away, not so much. It's just that kind of sharpening uh, and shimmering loss of detail. Other than that, I think because reshade wouldn't work on the lower resolutions um, means that the reshade quality is probably lower lower recounts and you can kind of sort of see that if I zoom in really far on the shadowing there there's just less detail in the shadow but mm, it's not again it's not that noticeable 
beyond everything else and it's probably hidden under the sort of loss of uh, detail there anyway through the final image but again when you zoom out it's a lot harder to tell it's only when you zoom right in it becomes really obvious and when you're in play and you're seeing shimmering um, so let's, uh, let's leave native on that side and switch over to balanced on this side that's balanced with reshade on that side and let's zoom right in let's go to this area again yeah just same story just less sharpening it looks like less sharpening less detail slightly less detail still a pretty good solution so if we put in this side, we put on ultra quality with reshade and compare ultra quality FSR to balanced. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's rendering at a lower resolution on balanced. Uh, there's a lot less uh, data to resolve there. You can see uh, some of the small bits of geometry just kind of blending in there and disappearing and the lights there as well. So you got that definite blur. But it does look slightly less sharp and a bit more natural. So you've got like less detail, but there's less sharpening as well, it looks like. I don't think sharpening is independently configurable. So I mean you could even say that's subjective what one looks better there. I mean up close you can see the the obvious technical losses from the uh lack of resolution to get information from but from a distance someone may prefer the softer look but with less sharpening and if you look at that building here down the side that doesn't look too much different with the stair stepping there and even those windows still look pretty good and I think in balance mode we're getting an extra 20 FPS on top of native 4k so I think it's, it's really good overall it's really really good you know, if you're running Terminator and I mean, it should, Terminator Resistance should be a fairly easy game to run, but if you're having a bit of trouble with it, and or maybe you want to get the graphical settings up and you want to run it in high resolution, but you're struggling a bit on the frame rate, I think FSR can really save you there and won't really impact the image quality. But if you want to run Reshade, then that's also going to massively help. So yeah, FSR is some really cool tech. It's a shame I couldn't look into Nvidia uh, NIS. I'm not sure which one has the edge there. I think Horizon Zero Dawn now has FSR and DLSS and you can apply NIS to it as well. So I could possibly compare all three in a future video. FSR is pretty impressive. Again, I think they've improved it since I last tried it because it did look a bit blocky last time I tried it. So I think that just about wraps that up. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think of the new Terminator DLC if you've played it. Let me know of any other games that also have FSR and NIS uh, DLSS sort of capability in them so you can easily switch them in the UI to compare. That would be really interesting to see. And please do like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.